Okay, so the Spider-Man comics have lost all sense of who Peter Parker is. And it's not even a joke. Like, they genuinely have. So, issue 32 came out, and you know what? It wasn't actually that bad. When you consider that the other issues were very, very bad, this one isn't actually that bad. So, the whole premise of this issue is following the Goblin Queen and following Craven the Hunter. And basically, they team up to try and restore the sins into Norman Osborn, making him the Green Goblin again. I have told you guys many times in my videos before how much I hate Norman Osborn not being the Goblin and being a good guy. Obviously, I am not for that. But the development that we actually have gotten from Norman and some of the moments that he's had with Peter have actually been pretty nice nice and have probably become one of my more favorable parts of these comics. Obviously, I'm still not for it. I still don't agree with Norman being a good guy after everything he did to Peter, including kill Gwen Stacy, obviously. But in terms of the state of these comics at this moment in time, the stuff with Norman Osborn isn't actually too bad and is actually quite enjoyable sometimes. The chemistry between Peter and Norman is actually pretty good and I think Zeb Wells has done a good job of writing them too given the circumstances that these characters are in at this moment in time. Which means that Norman's fall to becoming the Goblin again is actually one of the stories I'm actually invested in when it comes to this run. Despite however bad the circumstances are that this story even exists in the first place. Throughout the previous issues we have had hints and teasers that Norman is going to become the Goblin again but it is only until this issue that they are really trying to go through with it. The reasoning as to why they need to restore his sins is really complicated. You don't really need to know it. It's something about Goblin Queen getting set free and Craven for some reason is doing it. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, it is what it is. You know what? We're getting Green Goblin again, so that's all that matters. We then also catch up with Peter and Felicia in this issue. And once again, I have no idea why they broke up because their chemistry is on point. I keep saying this, the one thing that Zeb Wells really got right in my eyes and I thought was the best decision given the circumstances was getting Peter and Felicia together because he writes them so well. Even in this interaction that they have here, I just I just feel like they belong together at this point in time. Obviously, I'd like for Peter to get back with Mary Jane at some point because, you know, that's what all us fans want from these comics is just Peter and MJ to be married again. But obviously, if we can't get that, the second best thing is clearly Peter and Felicia when Zeb Wells writes them because they are really, really good together. Either way, it turns out that Peter is going out with this girl who is a lawyer and basically, she is friends with Janice Lincoln, and they basically talk about the wedding. Basically, if you saw my previous video where we talked about the wedding between Randy and Janice, you will know that obviously, the wedding turned into absolute chaos because Tombstone was there, Hammerhead was there, and, you know, it's a Spider-Man comic, so... So this scene is, like, really, really weird, and I'll tell you why. So for context, basically, Janice and Randy haven't spoken since the wedding because Randy is overwhelmed at the life that he is getting into. Obviously, he's marrying Janice Lincoln, whose dad is quite literally probably one of the most dangerous mob bosses in New York City, which makes sense, right? So they haven't spoken since the wedding and since it got crashed. And yeah, basically, Peter and this lawyer are meeting up to discuss the falling out of Janice Lincoln and Randy and why they are not speaking with one another, which seems like the most backwards thing when you really think about it. The whole point of them meeting up is to talk about two other people who, even though they may know them, their lives do not affect them in the slightest. So when you put it like that, this scene is really weird because the only reason that these two people meet up is to talk about Janice and Randy, and there is no other reason whatsoever. Like, if Peter was going on a date with this person and then this happened to come up and they just started arguing about it, that would be fine, but the whole reason that they meet up is literally because they are going to talk about Janice and Randy. Peter says before that they are meeting up because they are going to compare notes to see if they can help. But obviously, if the lawyer, Michelle, she's called, I think, is obviously Janice's friend and Peter is Randy's best friend, then obviously they're going to start to argue about what happened because they're going to take sides. This whole interaction was so pointless. So anyway, yeah, that happened. It was really weird. It was kind of pointless. But it was a nicely written scene. I liked the dialogue. It was pretty cool. It was pretty entertaining. And it was pretty fun. And the art was pretty cool as well. So, 
Yeah, nice scene. Very pointless, though. We then catch back up with Goblin Queen and Craven. Basically, them just saying more about how they're going to basically bring Green Goblin back. You know, just extracurricular exposition. And then, obviously, we catch up with Norman and Peter. And this is what I mean. These scenes, the more that we go on with Norman being a good guy, are actually written pretty well. I really like this moment. Basically, Norman is saying to Peter that... You don't have to be around me all the time. You don't have to be around me 24-7. And Peter's like, well, you know, I'm kind of afraid that you'll turn back to being the goblin. But the more that I am around you, the more that I see that you're actually a pretty nice person underneath all the goblin stuff. And basically, Norman's true self underneath all the goblin stuff is starting to come out. And Peter is starting to learn who the real Norman Osborn actually is before all of the goblin stuff happened. Which I really like. And I think this is a really, really nice moment for both the characters and also the development of the Norman Osborn story. But the one moment that ruins all of this is when Peter says, the more I work with you, the more I recognize something familiar. The Norman Osborn I first met, the one who treated me like a son. I'm beginning to think that might be the real you. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. So the reason why this is not very comic accurate, could you say, is because Peter never met Norman Osborn before he was the goblin. Let just th let that sink in. Just let that sink in. Norman Osborn never treated Peter like a son. And I don't know where this whole Norman treats Peter like a son thing has come from. It's only since Sam Raimi's Spider-Man that that's really kind of been an adaptation of the character. But it seems like every single person on planet Earth, including the writer of the current run of Amazing Spider-Man, seems to think that was the case. Even though in this line of comics. Obviously, this is the same Peter from the 1960s. Never had that relationship with Norman Osborn. That was never a thing in these comics. And maybe it has been in other comics and other stories and other adaptations of Spider-Man. But in the 616 continuity, Norman Osborn never had that type of relationship with Peter Parker. And I think it's so frustrating that in the recent Spider-Man comics that literally connect to the ones from the 60s are referencing their relationship like it was a father-son type of thing, even though it never was. It's like the Spider-Man comics don't even know where they came from. They've forgotten who they are. And yeah, I like the whole father-son dynamic with Peter and Norman. I think it's cool, but it's not something that these comics ever did. Like, maybe they had a few interactions, but... Peter met the Goblin before he met Norman Osborn. I think people forget that the Goblin came about before Norman Osborn was ever introduced. Either way, Zeb Wells quite clearly hasn't read the early Spider-Man comics, or he has, and has just completely forgot that this ever happened. And somehow, this got through editorial, this got through other editors, I don't know, other people that have worked on these comics, it got through every single stage of production, from writing to penciling, to editing, to whatever it may be, to release to the public, and no one at Marvel headquarters said, maybe this didn't happen. So yeah, I think that just proves the state of Marvel editorial at the moment, because no one pointed out this flaw, because this, is, this isn't this is just a typo. This is mad. This broke continuity, and this never happened. Okay, so to end on a positive note, I actually kind of like what they did with the end of this comic. So obviously we know that Spider-Man comics at the moment are renowned for doing new stuff, but like doing it stupidly. And what I mean by that is, is that Spider-Man comics will come up with a new story, but they'll execute it in a way that undercuts everything that came before. I.e. Norman Osborn becoming a good guy. It's a good idea, but when you consider that he killed Gwen Stacy and he basically ruined Peter's life more times than you can count on two hands, it doesn't really work because Peter would never ever become friends with Norman Osborn. But still, as Zeb Wells has executed in this run regardless, it is, you know, it's a good idea. He writes them pretty well. They've got a good relationship. And if it wasn't for the past that Norman and Peter had, this would be a really, really good story. But it's held back by stuff that came before. So the Spider-Man comics tend to do this a lot, where they create a story, but it seemingly undercuts everything that happened before, meaning that we have a massive issue with it. This sort of stuff can be said about MJ and Paul, and a variety of other storylines that have happened over the last few years. 
But one thing they decided to do at the end of this comic, which I actually really like, which is a very new concept, but also I think it is really, really cool, is basically, in an attempt to save Norman from becoming the Goblin again, basically, when the Goblin Queen and Craven try to restore the sins to Norman Osborn, Peter puts himself on the line and gets in the way. And basically, there's the spear that's meant to restore the sins. You guys don't need to know the ins and outs of it. Basically, it's a spear that if it touches you, it restores the sins. Anyway, you could probably guess what happens. Peter gets in the way of the spear, and Peter becomes the Green Goblin. And you know what? This is really, really, really freaking cool. I love this. I think this is a really cool concept, because now we're going to have Norman Osborn try to save Peter from himself, essentially. And I think that's really, really cool. I don't know why I love that concept. But either way, we get to see Peter just tear up the next few issues, which even though obviously storytelling wise, it might not be that great because we know these comics aren't that great. It's just going to be cool as hell to see Spider-Man be the Goblin. That is going to be awesome. I can't wait. But either way, that is pretty much it for today's review of this issue. If you did enjoy, make sure to like on it and also make sure to subscribe if you are new around here. We post every single Wednesday and Saturday when it comes to Spider-Man. And obviously, we review all of the comics as well. So when the next issue comes out, we will be reviewing it. So make sure you're subscribed. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.